how Star vs. the Force of Evil has evolved. And evolved. We welcome you to yet another Star vs. Fanbase video. I'm sure we can all, if not the majority of us fans, agree that Star vs. the Force of Evil has been going downhill ever since Battle for Muni ended. Needless to say, the show has lost focus in areas that appeal to many. Today, we're gonna look over how the show evolved and devolved. And as usual, there will be spoilers. Thou hath been warned. The very first season of Star vs. the Force of Evil, in my eyes, is a fairly decent introduction to the series. But that's all it is. Decent. The animation style is passable, but subjectively, isn't really all that attractive to look at. Although it flows very nicely, theoretically, this can make the show more enjoyable and lighthearted, seeing as the characters tend to hop around a lot. The end result of the animation, unfortunately, didn't turn out as veritable to watch. Season 1 itself can be enjoyable. It does have a very episodic feel, but with lighter story elements. Humor was emphasized over story and character development in this season, and it does do a fairly good job at keeping the audience entertained in that regard, at least for the most part. Speaking of characters, there are a ton introduced here. The problem is, the majority of the side and background characters are really forgettable, or just straight up noxious. Ferguson, Alfonso, Brittany, Jeremy, and even Starfan 13 were scrapped later on or ignored for the sake of developing a good plot. Some characters did stick around throughout all three seasons though, like Tom, Jana, Jackie, and Ponyhead. So yeah, season one was just decent. Lots of filler, tons of unnecessary characters, and very light story progression. But it is forgiven by well-written humor though, and the fact that it is just the first season. Season 2 is where things really start to pick up. There's lots of story progression and character development. Not only that, but the animation has definitely been improved to fit this feel. It's not as bouncy and hyperactive anymore, while still keeping transitions between movements very fluid, and it all just comes off as really nice to look at. The plot itself is well written, and so is the main cast. Star Marco undergo many changes here. Javi was a fantastic antagonist. Luna went through some development, though most of it was displayed in Battle for Muni. To break off from the series themes the main plot presents, there are some filler episodes, but there aren't too many. And like season one, most of them are decent and have good humor in them. And then we have season three. Oh, this one gets real messy. It had so much potential to be fantastic, but it just didn't meet our expectations. To tell the truth, even Battle for Muni felt somewhat dissatisfying. It still felt pretty good, but it felt empty. All the flack we give the show now, though, comes from everything after Battle for Muni. The animation and quality is poor in comparison to even season one. It's too stiff and isn't as fluid as it should be. In fact, it's leaning towards flash quality of animation. Not only that, but most of the story writing is mediocre, to say the least, even for the majority of episodes contributing to the plot. Not that progression is the show's focus anymore anyway. Which is a shame, considering the story presented in Season 2 was what made fans so invested in the show. Unfortunately, like Season 1, there is a lot of filler. So much that it's preventing characters, including Eclipsa and the main cast, from having room to develop in meaningful ways. In fact, Eclipsa, probably one of the most interesting characters so far, has only been on screen far too scarcely. The writers didn't even introduce her properly. The character development is also blocked off by very, very unnecessary ship drama. This wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't handled so poorly. We already made a video regarding that, so you can just check that out. That said, Season 3 wasted so much potential. It could have been great, but poor animation and bad writing destroyed it. But the question is why? Why did the production values drop this hard? A lot of people criticize Darren Nefsey for it since she is the creator of Star vs. the Force of Evil. But this show is still a Disney IP, and they can change how, when, and if the show airs on your motion picture broadcasting system. Episodes felt rushed, and for good reason. Disney chose quantity over quality. The writers also probably didn't know what to do after Toffee had died, even though they had both Eclipsa and Meteora to work with. But that doesn't mean we won't continue to make new videos on this show. Click the subscribe button to keep up to date with what we have planned for the future. The like button helps us a lot too, in case you didn't know. You know you want to do it. Believe in yourself. <laughs>